Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Yaqat Zaman. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome to this video, guys. We are going through Mukhtasar al qudud If you guys have not checked out my uh, channel, check out my YouTube channel, guys. Uh, otherwise, let's go through the normal procedure. We're going to go through Mukhtasar al quduri which is the chapter of Bab al Salat, Salat al Jum'ah. Jum'ah in the Arabic language means Friday in the week, seven days of the week, one day is Friday. Misr means city. Now, Misr can also mean Egypt as well. But here it means city. Jami' means comprehensive, encompassing. So a Misr Jami' means a city which is very comprehensive, has all the amenities of a city. Musalla means a prayer area. Al Misr means city again. Qura is a gem of Qariya, which is a village. Qariyatun. Iqama, Aqama, Yuqima, Iqama. Here Iqama means um, to establish. Okay, so here it's the establish. Um, and then Sultan means leader um, and then you got Shara'it which is the gem of Shart okay so that's condition Waqat as you guys know is time then you've got Khutbah which is the sermon the talk that the Imam gives Yakhtubu is the action of giving a talk right the delivering a talk giving a talk Khutbatain times two Yafsidu Fasala Yafsidu it means to separate Right, qa'da it means sitting, and then qa'iman iqtasara yaktasiru, and then suffice. Okay, if it's from the word qasara, okay, that like shorten. La buddha, uh, let me know what la buddha means. Well, you guys are gonna find that later, but if you know already, put it in the comments. Tawil means long, yukrahu means offensive, uh, makru, you know, disliked, offensive, and then jama'a means a uh, group yeah so mishara'ati al jama'at all right so let's get rid of this actually actually you know what? we won't do this we'll do next time all right up to there right let's look at some tarkib now so okay so you have over here babu salat al jumati so you normally say hada and then babu is mudaf salat al jumma mudaf mudaf alayh la tasih al jumatu jumma is the fa'il of tasihu and then fi misrin is mawsuf, jami'in is the sifa, fi musalla. Now let me know why this is the, the fatha or the vowel is not on the ya. Does anyone know why the vowel is not on the ya? If you know, put it in the comments. Musalla is mudaf, misr is mudaf ilayhi. So why don't we say basically musal, musalla yi. Wala tajuzu fi al qura. So tajuzu is fi'l plus the fa'il. Fi al qura is jar majroor. وَلَا تَجُوزُ إِقَامَتُهَا إِقَامَتُهَا is the fa'il of تَجُوزُ This sultan is Jarl Majroor and then here the second sultan that's the fa'il of Amarahu مِنْ شَرَائِتِهَا شَرَائِتْ is the Majroor uh, and then وَقْتِ is the مُبْتَدَ مُؤَخَّر تَسِحُ مِنْ وَقْتِ ظُهْرِ وَلَا تَسِحُ بَعْدَهُ تَسِحُ is فِعِل بَعْدَهُ is ظَرْف مِنْ شَرَائِتِهَا جِنْ خَبْر مُقَدَّم الْخُطْبَةُ Mubtada Mu'akhar Qabla is Mudaf Mudaf Ilayhi becomes a Dharf. Yakhtubu is the Fi'il. Imamu Khutbataini is the uh, Fa'il Maful Bihi. Yafsilu Bainahuma Fi'il plus the Fa'il Bainam Bika'adatin. Yakhtubu Qa'iman Hal Ala Taharati Jar Majrufayn Iqtasar Ala Dhikri Allahi Ta'ala Jaza Inda Abi Hanifata Qal La Buddha so la buddha this is la nafil jins so we say la buddha buddha literally means uh, escape so la buddha means no escape min is jar and then dhikrin is mawsuf tawil sifa yusamma is the fil majhul and the nine file inside of it khutbatan is the maf'ul bihi okay fa in khataba qa'idan ishal ala ghayri tahar or ala ghayri taharatin ishal as well yukrahu yukrahu is the uh, fi'l plus the naifail. Okay, yukra fi'l, majhul plus naifail. Alright, that's uh, that key part done. Now let's look at the masala. Now. So what's the masala basically saying? So there's a few masalas here. First of all, Jum'ah is one of the days of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Friday is what we call Jum'ah. On this day, Allah has told us to pray a specific type of salat, which is known as the Jum'ah salat. Now, according to the Hanafis, this can only be established prayed in a city that is known as a city jami a comprehensive city what's a comprehensive city 
one that usually has such a big mosque that uh, the people, you know, the people, the the, the, the mosque is is like very big. It, it, it capacity, its capacity uh, is for the entire population, and the people can just about fit into it. Or they can't fit into it. This is not a, a jami masjid, right? And it, and the city has like police, and the city has a hospital, and you know, judge, and all those kind of things. So this is where normally what used to happen in the olden days. Uh, they used to pray their Jumas in the main masjid of the city, the big mosque, the Jami masjid. And all these other little mosques would close for Juma. They would close and everyone would just basically set off for the Juma in the big mosque. Uh, so this is known as a Jami city. So therefore you can't really pray Juma in a village. A village cannot have Juma. They have Dhuhr. Um, and if, for example, they don't have a big mosque, that's fine. They can pray in like a big field, a musalla, a prayer area. That's also acceptable as well. So, you know, some, 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 some cities might have a big mosque, but it's not enough for them. The people are too much. There's too many of them. So if the population is too high, then what happens is the people can actually uh, pray in a large field or even a sports hall or anything of that sort. Musalla al-Misr. The idea basically is Juma is a weekly event, public event, and you want to kind of show the the, the sort of like glory of, of the Muslims, the strength of the Muslims, um, and it kind of brings the community together as well. So it's a city event rather than a village event. So either in the big mosque or in the uh, Misr Jami'in or Musall al-Misr or in the Musall. The Musalla is usually outside, but the reason it said Misr Jami or Musalla Misr because the Musalla is usually outside the city walls, yeah, outside the city, so the outs, outskirt borders. So, so that's that's why it says either in the city or in the Musalla Misr. So, La Tasihul Jumaatu Juma is not valid illa fi Misr Jami except in a comprehensive city, like I explained. Or if you can't pray in that comprehensive city, then you can pray in the Musalla of the Misr, just in the outskirts. وَلَا تَجُوزُ فِي الْقُرَىٰ It's not permissible. Juma is not permissible in cities, in villages. Right? Okay, let's uh, draw something over here. Um, okay, so let's, for example, let's imagine this is the... Right, these are the city. And the musalla is just on the outskirts, or just right on the... And these villages, there's no Juma in the villages. If they want to pray Juma'ah, they come to the main cities. Otherwise, they just do their normal, you know, Dhuhr Salat. Right, so what's a village? A village is basically something which doesn't really have all the amenities of a normal city. Maybe just a few houses and just a mosque or something. And they don't really have a judge. They don't really have uh, the main sort of um, characteristics of a major city. Nowadays, obviously, villages are more comprehensive in, in, in like the UK. So they would more likely fall under a city. Uh, Mr. Njamian. Okay, uh, so La Tajuz... إِقَامَتُهَا إِلَّا لِسُلْطَانَ Who can actually establish Juma? Now, normal five times Salat, every, anyone can pray. Okay, There's not any specific individual that can only establish it. But Juma, because it's a public event and you're going to get people who are going to argue with each other and you know you don't want this event to be an event where people are just going to cause disunity. So the leader of the Muslims, the government basically, they are the ones that establish it. So either the leader is going to pray, the Khalifa, or someone that he's deputed, appointed. His deputy, or someone you know that's been chosen by the government to lead the prayers, All right? So th that's the guy who who leads the prayers. And as for everyone else, they can't do it basically. So if the, if the leader has given permission or there's no deputy, you can't establish your own juma somewhere. It has to be done by the government. Otherwise, everyone would have their own juma, and then it causes chaos. However, now obviously in today's times, it's situations are very very different, especially with things like COVID and and all, all sorts. Um, and having large congregations is something that's problematic. So it's a bit different now. So la tajuzul iqamatuha is not permissible to establish Juma illa li sultan except for the leader, or liman, or for the one amarahu a sultan, the one that the sultan, meaning the authority, has instructed. Now there are some conditions that need to be found in Juma. Right. So this is not like a normal salat. So some things it resembles a normal salat, and some things it doesn't. So for example, like min shara'itiha al waqt. So you have to be on time. What's the time? So the timing is basically the normal Dhuhr time. So from when Dhuhr starts all the way till the Dhuhr ends, that's basically the time you can do the Jum'ah. Okay. So I mean, let's say Zohr starts at 12 and it finishes at 3. 
well that's that's basically the time that you're looking at any time within that time you can pray the Jummah right so it's not like you have to pray at the early time or later time preferably you pray at the early time but any time within that time you know the Zohar time is the time um, if it gets delayed then you can't pray all right so it was past past the Lord, then you're not allowed to pray at Asr time Jummah if you if you miss the prayer you actually pray Qadha of Dhuhr and obviously before Zohar time you can't pray uh, so that's why he says وَمِنْ شَرَائِتِ هَنْ From its conditions is the time فَتَسِحُ فِي وَقْتِ ظُهُرْ So therefore it's permissible فِي وَقْتِ ظُهُرْ In the time of ظُهُرْ وَلَا تَسِحُ بَعْدَهُ It's not permissible after it. Next condition وَمِنْ شَرَائِتِ هَنْ And from its conditions is خُطْبَة So normal salats do not have this. This is like basically a talk that's given. So, you know, you got this khutba, this talk that, Im that Imam gives. He gives actually two talks. الخُطْبَة قَبْلَ salat. So before the salat actually starts. The Imam gets on the member, gives a talk and two talks in fact. Yahtubu al Imam Khutbataini. So he gives two talks. Yeah, so Al Khutba Kabla Salat, Yahtubu, he gives a talk, the Imam gives a talk two, meaning two he delivers two talks. Uh all right. Um huma bi qadatin and he separates between the two khutbas with the sitting. So it's recommended to sit down. So you stand up, give the talk, then you sit down for the one. And then you get up and you give the talk. Uh, so if I was to kind of illustrate it here, because I know you guys probably like to see my uh, drawings. So illustration time. So this is a member. Imagine this is a member. So he stands on the member, gives a talk. And then what he does is he sits down. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just, just, just rub, rub, rub this out. So he sits down. Uh, and just like for a little while, it doesn't have to be very long. Just for a little while. And people can make du'as in this time as well. You probably see people make du'as. So he sits down for a little while. And then after a little while, he just stands up again. And he does the khutbah again. Right, a second khutbah. So he does two khutbahs. Uh, now, yakhtubu qa'iman. He gives a khutbah standing. It's preferable to give it standing, not sitting. Unless a person is excused and they can sit. Ala taharati. So they should have wudu as well. Right, ghusl and wudu is a must. Because they're going to be leading the salat so it kind of doesn't make sense that you're giving a talk without wudu and then you know ala now how much do you have to speak in the talk what do you have to say in the talk exactly so this is a difference of opinion between imam abu hanifa rahimahullah and between the sahibin so imam abu hanifa rahimahullah he basically says that the juma talk the bare minimum is simply just to do the dhikr of allah right that's what he says because in the quran allah says when the when the announcement for Juma is made, hasten towards Juma, rush towards Juma. So, ila dhikrillah, he says, fas aw ila dhikrillah. So, Allah, Allah says, calls the khutbah, calls the Juma dhikrillah. So, he's, he says, well, if Allah is calling it dhikrillah, that means if you were to do dhikr, you would be fulfilling what the Quran is saying. So, anything like subhanallah, just say subhanallah and sit down. That's it. Alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. Any of those kind of dhikrs, would be sufficient. That's basically what he's saying, the bare minimum. However, the sahibain, they disagree with him on this. Right? They say no. The bare khutbah has to be something which is considered to be a talk in the society. So what do the people consider to be a talk? Whatever they consider to be to be a talk, that's what a talk is going to be. So therefore, you have to start off with the praise of Allah. And then you have to have the salutations on the Prophet Wasallam. You have to read an ayah or two. You have to give some advice in there, remind them about Allah, make a dua, and so forth. Right? So you got like, you know, the normal things that you kind of technically hear in a talk, those are the basic, that's the basic skeleton that you're expecting. And that's it basically. So look, he says, If a person suffices with the dhikr of Allah, jaza, this is permissible according to Imam Abu Hanifa, waqala, and they both sahibain say, La Buddha, it's necessary min dhikrin tawilin. Of a long dhikr, a long sort of a remembrance. Yusamma khutbatan, which in society is known as a khutbah, like a reminder, like we call it. For in khataba qaidan, if he if he gives a talk sitting, is it allowed? Or ala ghayr taharatin, or he doesn't have wudu, would it be allowed? Jaza, it's permissible. However, yukrahu, it's considered offensive, it's considered disliked for a person to do that. And that's it basically. So, uh, I hope you guys benefit from this uh, video. Thank you very much, my patrons. Yeah, patrons, you guys are, are the motivators of, of my channel. And honestly, I make loads of dua for you guys. 
And Zakallah Khair for all of you guys for your support. Hit the like button, hit the uh, subscribe button. If you guys want to support my channel, if you guys want to help my channel, then uh, check out the videos I make. And also you can support it through PayPal and Patreon as well. Um, details are in the description below. And that's all from me. Take care, inshallah. I will see you guys next week. And yes, check out my other videos that I make in the week as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.